Today, we're testing the Kvaik Voss yeast at two different fermentation temperatures. Let's get started. So as many of you know, I love trying different yeast for mead. You might also know that the Kvaik yeast strains have been taking over the markets as the brand new thing. Kvaik Voss is one of those strains, and it's been toted to do well at lots of different fermentation temperatures. Specifically, people like to ferment with it at higher temperatures, such as 90 degrees Fahrenheit and above. The higher fermentation temperatures often lead to a bit of an orange or citrus note being more present in the brew. I've often used this yeast at higher temps and truly loved it. However, I wanted to test the other possibilities for it. Today I'm making a mead and fermenting it at two different fermentation temperatures. We're going to ferment one half of the mead at room temp and the other one at an outside temp of about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The room temp is going to be about 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The goal is to see what differences we can note coming from the yeast at these different temperatures. So to start, I'm making a hopped mead. Off camera, I boiled some hops in about seven gallons of water for about 30 minutes. I added about eight pounds of honey to the big batch of hop water. The starting gravity of this brew is 1.050. We then took that big batch of must, which is the honey and water mixture, and we moved it into two containers. The larger container is going to be our batch that ferments outside, and the smaller container will ferment inside. I'm using two tilt hydrometers to measure the temperature fluctuations of each. The tilt hydrometers also show gravity readings, but those got a little messy, so I'm not worried about them. We pitched our yeast and then we put our brews in their perspective places. The outside version sat in my garage during the heat of the summer and the inside sat in my mead room. You can see both graphs on the screen showing the temperature fluctuations of each. Both were given proper nutrition so they could ferment effectively. The outside version finished in about three or four days and the inside version took about seven or eight days to finish fermenting. Once they both finished at 1.000, we racked them into two different containers and stabilized them with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. I then moved them into kegs a couple days later, and we added the proportionate amount of honey to each one to get them to about 1.020 final gravity. We then added a pre-measured amount of pineapple juice that was proportionate for each one so they have the same flavor profile. We force carbonated both of them so they're ready to drink. I canned up a few and sent them to my friend Mandy over at Faywood Mead. I labeled them A and B so she couldn't tell which was which. The A version is the outside and the B is the inside. Let's see if there's any taste difference between them. Here we are for the tasting. I have the wonderful Mandy from Faywood Mead here to help with this great tasting. I, I had the pleasure of um, sending a box to her and I love sharing mead and this was part of it. I roped her in to my Yay! maniacal tastings. So um, thanks for being here. Glad you can uh, join me. Of course. Thanks for uh, for asking me to be here. I'm excited. You can attest I have not told you much about this other than you have two cans right now that say A and B. And we just talked about it. I'm not going to tell you much until kind of the end. But I will say the flavor profile you are drinking tonight is a pineapple hopped mead. So... Started with some with a hop base and then later on it added pineapple juice. So that was kind of my additions with a twist somewhere in there. So we'll talk about the twist here in a second. So let's go ahead and pour them open. Pour them open. Pour them into a glass. You guys can pour it open. <laughs> open them up that and pour them. <laughs> One of them, um, the A for me is not very carbonated. I don't know if yours is uh, like oh. B has a little more carbonation so we'll see if that changes anything but i'm gonna pour them okay hopefully yours are carbonated a is a little bit carbonated let's see yeah oh yours are yours is like almost clear oh goodness wow. almost mine is not <laughs> at all that's my a really right now, so. <gasps> Oh my gosh. My, I must have yeah. uh, not. I don't know. That's interesting. Okay. B. Mine is pretty. I don't have a second glass. I have a <laughs> <laughs> I'm second right. glass in hand. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yeah. That one's way more carbonated. Mm, mm -hmm. 
Yep, my A did not end up very carbonated. That's interesting. I thought I'd... We'll see if that uh, comes out in tasting, obviously. Maybe a little more carbonation will be present. Uh -huh. Okay, so in front of us, two glasses. My A is in my left hand, B is in my right. And uh, I just want you to taste them. Kind of go back and forth. And then give me your thoughts. What do you taste, if any difference between them at all? Uh, it might be kind of tough, but I'm still curious to see what you uh, come up with. So I'm gonna start with A, of course. Okay, same. Well, how about this? Let's just, bo let's just go back and forth a little bit and then we'll kind of come together with some tasting notes. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> got a strong like bitterness at the end from the hops yeah i like the flow of like the pineapple mm -hmm. hmm i'm having to peek through a little bit of this carbonation on b you kind of have to fake it make it uh, lose some carbonation i feel like to make it fair yeah <laughs> it's got that little competitive edge that's tough they're so similar yeah Besides the carbonation, obviously, but right. I'd agree. It is a very, they're very <laughs> close. <laughs> they're like, yeah, they're practically the same. I mean, I, I'm so curious. As it opens up, the bitterness dies down a lot, though. Yeah, which is nice. And then it just has this like nice hoppy, pineapple-y yeah, ness. Do you know that maybe it's the fact that the B has more carbonation? I feel like it has a little bit more brightness on it. Yeah, that's something I'm sort of noticing. Um, a mm -hmm. is a little more mellow, but I do think a lot of that is the the carbonation differences. Yeah. Yeah, the carbonation will bring out. Mm hmm. Hmm. That's tough. <laughs> yeah, so they're pretty dang close, right? That's, that's kind of where you're landing right now? Yeah. Mm hmm. So, do you have one you prefer more than the other? I guess since they're so similar, do you prefer more carbonation over less <laughs> with this? I like it carbonated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yours I mean, came out so go. clear. I'm I'm envious because mine are not clear at all. I'm like, what did I do? How did the yeah. the magic of shipping? I don't know. It's somehow they what all did the, it do? <laughs> cleared it up in the can. Mm hmm. All right, you ready to find out the um, variable here? Yeah. So what I did was I made um, I used Kvaik Voss, and everybody talks about Kvaik yeast and how they're notably, uh, especially Voss. Whenever you push out, it push it to higher temps, you get more of like a, a tropical fruit aroma or taste or whatever, orangey notes. So I basically made the same mead, big old batch of hopped mead. Split out part of it and and had my Kvike Voss ferment in a smaller container at room temp, it's like seventy ish, mm -hmm. somewhere around that realm, and then the um, other one fermented in the garage when it was pretty hot, like it was about eighty five ninety, roughly. And my hope was I wanted to see if there's a difference, see if you could push out and get some of those orangey flavors from the Voss at the higher temp. Now those the temperature ranges weren't huge i mean it was pretty small arguably mm -hmm. but i wondered if there was any taste difference between them like you've said i don't notice much i feel like they're pretty dang close they're very close so i just basically i i back sweetened with the same amount of honey did a ratio um because one batch was small the the room tent batch was much smaller than the the one that went outside so I had to do a little bit of math to figure that out and then added the same amount of pineapple juice. So the flavor profiles should be the same or at least the amounts of uh, flavors should be the same. Mm -hmm. I don't notice much. That's not to say there isn't a difference. Maybe I just didn't go low enough. Maybe the, the Kvike yeast, when you get down to like 60 or something like that, you're fermenting in their lower realm, will yeah. put off different flavor profiles. But... I don't know. I thought it was an interesting test to see what would happen. It is. <laughs> Have you done much with Kvike? I haven't done anything with Kvike yet. You gotta do it. You gotta go for it. 
I know. I I really need to. I I've just I've heard that the high temperatures are so like that's optimal. Yeah. Well, that was uh, part of this. It was like, am I am I do I need to take my Kvike and put it outside? Because if I don't firm it at ninety five degrees, it's not going to put out the good product. Right. I will say that the um, noticeable difference was in fermentation time. The one that was outside was like three or four days. I mean, it was pretty dang fast. Inside yeah. took like seven to ten in that realm to finish. So obviously fermentation times are different. But flavors, I'm not getting a huge profile. And it could just be that there's a lot going on here. So it's hard to kind of see and get some of that yeasty character. Could be a problem there. But I don't know. It's a lot to think about. So which one was outside and which one's inside? Great question. The one that was inside was B. Oh. Mm -hmm. And the one that was outside was A. Ah. Okay. Yep. Now I'm going to taste them again. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, and now I know. I'm looking like, for the orange. Hang on. <laughs> Let me see this. Yeah, it's probably there, but also the the pineapple side. Maybe I, I did this in a way that was kind of tough because I added that tropical note with the pineapple. So maybe I right. already highlighted a profile that was there, and so like now maybe A is sitting like this and B is like this, and they're like super close. I don't know. Could be. Could be. But regardless, if you want a fast fermentation. Uh, Kvike is the way to go. I mean, it, it was like three or four days. It was so fast, fast and furious. And um, inside, it was pretty fast still. But if you're going for the flavor profile side, I don't know that it necessarily matters all that much. I'm sure people are going to fight me in the comments. And I'm not, not trying to start a, <laughs> a war by any means. But that's what I'm gathering from this experiment. So, I don't know. You got to try some Kvike yeast, Mandy. It's time. I do. Oh, there's so many things that I need to try. Braggots, Kvike. Yeah. All those things. Many untouched avenues over here. Yeah. Well, I would um, I would just get a little... Well, I guess there's so many Kvike yeast. I don't know. People... I'm curious. Comment below. What Kvike yeast should Mandy start with? What should be her first one? Because I'd be curious to see what people's uh, thoughts are. Some people are... I don't know. There's like the Kvike fan base. And then there's like people who are like, it's like the English premier league of, of soccer where it's like, you're like, like that style. And then you're like, but I love this team, you know? And so maybe they love Voss or maybe they love SB or whatever the other ones are. So I don't know. Be curious to see. Yeah. I would love to uh, have a recommendation yeah. to start off on. That'd be awesome. So thank you, Mandy, for helping me with the tasting. Uh, if you have not heard of Faywood Mead, you should go check out her YouTube channel. She actually has, I would say, the most scientific mead video out right now where she sat down with a true fermentation scientist and talked about the, the what fermentation does and how it works and how it equates to mead and wine and beer and just like, just really deep, did a deep dive into that. And it was such a fun episode, even for someone who's like, I, I felt like going into it. I was like, well, I know these things. And then she started saying stuff and I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> so it's so cool. So go check her out. And of course, a ton of other content, um, tons of recipes and things, but check out Faywood Mead links, of course, below. So yeah. Thanks, Mandy. Of course. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of that mead. And uh, this is not the last box you'll get. So be excited for that. <laughs> Cheers. Yay. Cheers. <laughs>